Are you over 50 and considering the carnivore diet? If so, you're not alone in asking whether it's possible or advisable to start at this stage in life. The great news is that, yes, you can absolutely do carnivore at any age, and in fact it may be especially beneficial for those in their 50s, 60s and beyond. A lot of people over 50 are dealing with chronic ailments, things like joint pain, inflammation, digestive issues and even cognitive decline that are often the result of diet and lifestyle choices. Switching to a carnivore diet can help reduce inflammation, restore metabolic health, and improve your overall quality of life. But embarking on this journey requires a thoughtful approach, especially for those of us in our golden years. Unlike our younger selves, our bodies may be more sensitive to drastic changes, and it's essential to make sure you are giving your body what it needs to thrive. With that said, let's dive into some practical and specific tips on how to get started with the carnivore diet after 50 and how to set yourself up for long-term success. Ease into carnivore gradually. One of the most important pieces of advice I can give is to ease into the carnivore diet rather than jumping in cold turkey. If you've been eating a typical diet that includes hundreds of grams of carbohydrates per day, suddenly going from that to virtually zero carbs can be a shock to your system. This can trigger what's commonly known as the keto flu, which can include symptoms like headaches, fatigue, irritability, and even nausea. While these symptoms are temporary and not harmful, they can certainly make the initial stages of the diet more difficult than they need to be. So rather than putting your body through this all at once, take it slow. Start by cutting out the obvious high-carb foods first. Get rid of grains, things like bread, pasta, and cereals, along with ultra-processed foods and anything with added sugars. These are often the foods in the middle aisles of the grocery store, so think of them as your no-go zone. Gradually phase these out over a few weeks instead of all at once. You can also start reducing your sugar intake. This means no more sugary desserts, candies, or pastries. Even sweetened coffee should be addressed. If you're used to adding flavored creamers or sugar to your coffee, swap those out for half and half or heavy cream, which are low in carbs and sugar-free. If you need a sweetener, Opt for something like allulose or stevia, but the goal should be to move away from sweeteners altogether over time. Once you've eliminated most processed and sugary foods, start lowering your carbohydrate intake systematically. Begin by reducing your carbs to around 100 grams per day. Once your body adjusts, lower it further to 50 grams a day and then to 20 grams. This gradual reduction over a few weeks or even a few months if necessary, will give your body the time it needs to adapt. As you reduce carbs, you'll also want to increase your intake of animal fats and proteins, which are the foundation of the carnivore diet. High-fat, moderate protein foods like steaks, eggs, butter and fatty fish will help you maintain energy levels and feel satiated. Gradually transitioning in this way helps prevent those uncomfortable keto flu symptoms and sets you up for long-term success. Focus on electrolytes. The next tip is one that often gets overlooked by beginners and that's managing your electrolytes. Electrolytes are essential minerals, like sodium, potassium, and magnesium, that help regulate vital functions in your body, from muscle contractions to hydration levels. When you first start the carnivore diet, it's common to lose a lot of water weight as your body depletes its stored glycogen. Unfortunately, when that water goes, so do a lot of your electrolytes, which can leave you feeling drained, dizzy, and even give you headaches. This electrolyte imbalance is one of the key contributors to the discomfort people feel during the first few weeks of the carnivore diet. It's often mistaken for keto flu, when in reality, the symptoms could be due to not having enough electrolytes in your system. To combat this, make sure you have an electrolyte supplement on hand before you even begin your carnivore journey. You want to make sure the supplement is clean, meaning no added sugars, sweeteners, or fillers. A good mix will include plenty of sodium, potassium, and magnesium. One easy way to maintain your electrolyte levels is to drink a solution that combines these essential minerals with water. A simple electrolyte mix with no sugar or artificial additives is perfect. A daily dose of unflavored electrolytes added to 16 to 24 ounces of water should help you avoid the fatigue, cramping, and headaches that can come with the initial stages of the carnivore diet. Many people feel the benefits of having this on hand from day one making the transition far smoother and less taxing on the body. Make sure you're eating enough food. Another important tip, especially for those of us who've spent decades hearing that we should be eating low-calorie and low-fat diets, is to make sure you're eating enough food. 
I know that this can feel counterintuitive if you've been told for years to cut calories, but one of the key principles of the carnivore diet is to eat until you are full and satisfied, not to restrict calories. Animal protein and fats are incredibly satiating, so you're less likely to overeat, but you also want to make sure you're giving your body enough fuel to function properly. In the beginning, it might feel strange to eat more than you're used to. We've been trained to believe that eating fewer calories is the key to weight loss, but when it comes to the carnivore diet, this couldn't be further from the truth. On carnivore, you're giving your body the nutrient-dense foods it needs to function optimally, and because animal-based foods are so filling, you may find it difficult to eat as much as you actually need, especially in the first few weeks. It's critical to eat enough to support your metabolism, especially during the adjustment period. One way to make sure you're getting enough calories is to track what you're eating for the first few weeks. You don't need to obsess over every bite, but using a simple app like MyFitnessPal can help you gauge how much protein, fat, and total calories you're consuming. Ideally, you'll want to focus on getting a good balance of fats and proteins, lean too much into one, and you might feel unsatisfied or overly full. If you notice you're only getting 1,000 or 1,200 calories a day, it may be time to add in another meal or snack to keep your energy levels up and prevent your body from entering starvation mode where it holds onto fat stores instead of burning them. Track your progress differently. As tempting as it is to rely on the scale to track your progress, I strongly advise against making it your primary measurement tool. Weight can fluctuate for all sorts of reasons water retention, stress, hormones, or even just the time of day. So don't get discouraged if the number on the scale doesn't move as quickly as you'd like. Instead, focus on other ways to measure your progress, especially at the beginning. One of the best things you can do before starting the carnivore diet is to take baseline measurements of your body. Measure your waist, hips, arms, and thighs so you can track how your body composition changes over time. Often people will notice their clothes fitting better and inches disappearing long before the scale shows any significant changes. This is because fat loss doesn't always translate directly into pounds lost, especially when you're gaining lean muscle or when your body is reducing inflammation. Also pay attention to how you feel both physically and mentally. Many people experience a reduction in joint pain, improvements in digestion, clearer thinking, and more energy after adopting a carnivore lifestyle. These are huge wins and they're much more important than what the number on the scale says. Keeping track of these non-scale victories can keep you motivated when the scale isn't showing immediate results. Commit to 30 to 90 days. If you're just starting out, I recommend committing to at least 30 to 90 days of the carnivore diet before making any judgments about how well it's working for you. This time frame allows your body the chance to fully adapt to the changes in your eating habits and it gives you enough time to experience the full benefits of the diet, like reduced inflammation, better digestion, and even weight loss. Healing takes time, and after years of eating a standard diet full of processed foods, your body may need those 90 days just to reset and heal. After 90 days, you can reassess how you're feeling and whether you want to continue with strict carnivore or incorporate a few low-carb foods like some vegetables or fruits. The great thing about this diet is that it's flexible, and what works best for you will ultimately depend on your individual health needs and goals. But no matter what you choose, sticking with it for at least 30 to 90 days will give you the clearest picture of how the carnivore diet can improve your health. Takeaway. Starting the carnivore diet over 50 is not only possible, but it could also be one of the best things you do for your long-term health. With careful planning, gradual transitions, and a focus on real, nutrient-dense foods, you can thrive on this diet. Keep an eye on your electrolytes, make sure you're eating enough, and focus on how you feel, not just what the scale says. Remember, healing takes time, but the results can be life-changing. If you're ready to take the plunge, consider joining a support group of like-minded individuals to share tips and stay motivated. The benefits of this diet can truly enhance your quality of life as you age, giving you more energy, less pain, and a greater sense of well-being. Now that we've covered all the essentials for starting the carnivore diet after 50, I hope you feel more confident and prepared to take the next step in improving your health and well-being. Whether you're easing into it or ready to dive right in, remember that this is a journey, and it's all about making sustainable, lasting changes that work for you. If you found these tips helpful, or if you have any questions, I'd love to hear from you.
drop a comment below and let me know where you're at in your carnivore journey, or ask any questions you have. I'm always happy to help and share more insight based on your feedback, and if you think this video could help someone else, maybe a friend, a family member or someone in your circle who's been considering a diet change, be sure to share it with them. You never know who might benefit from this information. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this content. It really helps the channel out. And if you want to stay up to date with more health, wellness and carnivore related content, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications so you never miss an update. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Stay healthy, stay strong, and good luck with your carnivore journey.